Uh, Devon Agassi with the forearm. And we're down to 2.07 left. And UTSA leads by 17. And free throws come for Terrence Williams. Foul on Agassi is his second. It's also the ninth team uh, foul. Actually, it's UTSA's 10th foul. Uh, Charlotte's got nine, so we're going to be in the double bonus the rest of the way no matter what. The free throw by Williams is good. And the last 207 can't tick off the clock fast enough right now for UTSA with the, the lead that they have. It should be okay right here. It's a 16-point lead. They still have to take care of it. They still have to make Charlotte pay for being over aggressive. Should be. Free throw is uh, no good, and they're going to get a foul on Charlotte, pushing off of McGregor. And so Rico's got to shoot free throws on the other end with 2.06 left. And a foul on Clayton will be his fourth, and two free throws for Rico McGregor. And the Rooklanders will try to add to a 16-point lead right here at 72-56. McGregor's got nine points, and he's got eight rebounds. And he's played a very good game for UTSA. The other day in the Marshall game with uh, McGregor in foul trouble, it was Kai Sherman that just dominated the Charlotte Post players. And McGregor against two very uh, highly touted Charlotte players has done very well today as he hits the first of the two free throws. Clayton's one of the best offensive rebounders in the nation. Thorne's a good uh, physical presence under the goal. McGregor definitely has the size and he, he has the talent. His upside is enormous. Here's the next one. It's good too. And it's a 74-56 Roadrunner lead with 2.05 to go. Into the front court, Henry around a Williams screen. Attacks in the goal, throws it left side. Three on the way from Ingram is good. And makes it 74-59 with two minutes to play. Agassi out of control, but Cherry fouled him over on the left side. And now Devon will go to the free throw line for UTSA. And two free throws will come for Devon Agassi. And I think right now UTSA will take, you know, trading baskets. That's not going to be an issue. And at some point, Charlotte will probably start to foul if uh, they want to try to get back in this one. Agassi hits the first of the two free throws, 75-59. The lead's still at 16 for UTSA. Charlotte was able to get it down as close as eight. I almost wanted to say he rushed that last one. <laughs> and now there's going to, I think uh, Devon Agassi's got some blood, so Rody Moss has got to get uh, a Band-Aid on him, and they'll give them 30 seconds or so to get the Band-Aid on him and let him uh, get back out there before so they don't have to sub for him. But the... Uh, and maybe it, was, maybe it was just on his jersey that they had to wipe it off because uh, Rody sprayed some spray on there and took care of that. Now they're, the huddle over by the UTSA bench is taking too long for the officials' liking, so they're going to get uh, Agassi back to the free throw line. We're down to 153 left in the game. And here's the second of the two free throws for Agassi. In the air and good. 76-59, Brooks Thompson will take a 30-second timeout right here. UTSA will have two remaining. Charlotte has two remaining as well. And so, and I think Charlotte will try to get to the lane as quickly as they can, try to attack the goal as quickly as they can, and see if they can come up with some easy points or kick it to a shooter for a three. And then they'll probably start playing the foul game for a little while. But if UTSA can maintain this, this lead in the uh, around the 15-point mark, then uh, they should be okay uh, in this last one minute and 53 seconds. They just have to take care of the ball and not have any unforced turnovers. UTSA hits the road next week. Games will be at UAB on Thursday night. We'll be on the air at 645. And then next Saturday, we'll be in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, as the Roadrunners take on Middle Tennessee State. That will be a 4.45 airtime with the tip-off just after 5. Henry with the basketball. He'll work his way into the front court. He'll look to the left side of the floor. Phillip Jones comes out, hard hedge on him. Right side, Williams fakes the three, now pulls up and shoots the three. Wide right, Cherry tracks down the rebound. Williams chases him to the corner and knocks the ball out of bounds. We're down to 138 to play, and Henry will inbound it for Charlotte in front of the 49er bench. 
And he'll get it into Williams against uh, James Williams. Here's the drive in the lane, and James fouled him. And it'll be free throws for uh, Williams as UTSA is over the double bonus limit. Are you a UTSA student and his college tuition have you in a bind? Well, let your San Antonio area Chevy dealers help. Like their Facebook page. Enter Chevy's Everyday Scholar Sweepstakes and you could win $2,000 towards tuition. Find them on Facebook at Drive Me Happy Chevy San Antonio for details. Free throw, Williams in the air, good. And it makes it 76 to 60. Jordan Sims is going to come to the Roadrunner bench, and he'll check in if Williams makes this next free throw. And he takes his time, and that one's on the way and good. And here comes Sims in for Philip, Philip Thomas. Or Philip Jones, I should say. So UTSA goes with uh, McGregor and James Williams, Agassiz Lewis. And triggering it in is Jordan Sims, and he'll bounce it into Agassiz. He's trapped in the backcourt, and he needs a timeout as he got cut off over there. So UTSA will have one timeout remaining in the last 133. So the uh, saga continues to try and get this last 93 seconds off the clock for UTSA as they try to hang on to a lead that they've had pretty much the entire game. Charlotte led by three very early in the game, a minute uh, 10 into the game. But UTSA has, uh, was able to take the lead shortly after that, and they really haven't looked back throughout the entire game and have never trailed since regaining that lead. And then led by as many as 21 at one point. And they'll have one timeout left. Charlotte's got two timeouts left if they uh, need to use them. But the idea is to get into the front court and wait for the foul to come and not be on the free throws. Jordan Sims to inbound in the back court with uh, Lewis, Agassiz, James Williams, and McGregor. Here's the inbounds coming to Agassiz. He'll spin away from Henry, throws to Lewis, up the floor to Williams. Williams attacks the goal. He's got a slam dunk. 78-61, the lead back to 17 with 1.23 left. They stopped the clock just because the ball squirted all the way out near half court. And Charlotte will inbound it down by 17 with 1.20 left. And Henry's taken no just taking all the time up, yeah. in the world to get the ball up the floor. Now he'll attack the goal, throws it up with a wild shot on the left hand. They're going to get Jordan Sims for his fifth foul. Uh, Jordan looked at him and said, I didn't foul him. Why would I foul somebody? So Philip Jones has to come back for uh, UTSA. There was no sense of urgency from Henry bringing the ball up the floor. Not a bit. I think he's just kind of lollygagged up the floor. Hey, Roadrunner fans, SACU is now the official financial institution of UTSA Athletics. You can check them out at SACU.com. And go runners. Brooks Thompson's going to take this opportunity. He gets 30 seconds to decide who he wants to substitute. He already made his mind up, and it's going to be Phillip Jones. And uh, he checked in. So Henry will go to the free throw line. We're down to 115 left. It's a 78-61 UTSA lead. And here are the free throws. Number one's in the air, and swish on that one. Next three games for UTSA are on the road as well. Not only the two that I mentioned with UAB and Middle Tennessee next week, but on the 25th, they'll be in El Paso to take on UTEP. Second one good. It's a 78-63 game. And they'll get the ball to inbound. It is in, uh, is in the hands of the official. And now in the hands of UTSA, and McGregor gets it from Phillip Jones. McGregor's double teamed and tries to throw ahead but can't before he was fouled. And so Rico will have to shoot free throws with 1.12 left. I think if you can make these two, that'll just about do it, I'd say. Everybody else other than McGregor and Williams uh, coming over to have a conversation with Dan O'Dowd on the UTSA bench. Two free throws for Rico. Number one, he is no good off the heel. I think Dan's saying, don't foul? I would think so. Don't foul, stay in front, get the rebound. Don't let him shoot a wide open three. 
Here's Rico's second free throw, and that one's no good as well. And the rebound by Terrence Williams. 1-10 left. Henry a little bit more urgency this time as he pulls up and fires a three-pointer, and that one's good. And it's 78-66, so the lead is 12 with 102 left. Phillip Jones trying to get it inbounds to Keon Lewis. Keon splits the double team off to Agassi. Agassi all the way down the lane, bounce to McGregor, attacks the goal, lays it up and in. And one. And one. Before McGregor shoots the free throw, let's pause for identification along the Nelligan Sports Roadrunner Sports Network. That foul on Clayton was his fifth, and his night is over. So Thorne comes back on the floor for Charlotte. UTSA leads by 14 at 80 to 66. And they're going to have one more coming up here. Rico's uh, has uh, 13 points. He can now have a season high if he hits this one. He got 13 in the Corpus game earlier in the year. And he misses that one. So so misses at the free throw line. Here's Henry into the front court. He'll pull up and shoot a three, and that one's good. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Makes it an 11-point game. Phillip Jones in the backcourt is through a triple team. Up the floor to James Williams. Now James Williams will be covered up and fouled by Henry with 39.4. Charlotte still has two timeouts left, but I think that the Charlotte uh, bench, Alan Major, is pretty much conceded this one. Unless it gets closer, he's not going to use those timeouts. James's first free throw rattles out no good. So UTSA's missed four free throws in the last minute, trying to get this game over with. They just want to make it exciting, that's all. <laughs> Too exciting. Next one is good for Williams. 81-69. It's a four-possession game with 39 seconds to go. Here comes Henry across the timeline. Loses control by Agassi. Devon's tripped up and fouled, and Henry's uh, going to say goodnight. I think that's his fifth foul. Henry uh, pulls the shirt tail out and heads to the Charlotte bench, and Devon Agassi will walk the other way, and have a couple of free throws as they'll get uh, Marcus Bryan back on the floor. Henry uh, is their best player, one of their best players, 12 points. Uh, and he had uh, three assists and uh, four assists and three rebounds in the game. Here's Devon at the free throw line and the first of the two free throws, wide left. The UTSA's missed five of their last six. Actually, they missed their last five, last five in a row. Devon's got uh, 20 points now in three of his last four games. And this one's no good. They missed uh, another free throw. Here's Williams attacking the goal. Flips it up and in. Makes it a 10-point game at 81-71. Throw it into Keon Lewis. Keon Lewis is triple teamed, and they'll call another foul with 27.2. And so it's right now still a four-possession game for, uh, for UTSA. But they uh, would have... Uh, been able to dribble this clock out by now if they could have made these, some of these last uh, five or six free throws. Fourth foul on Terrence Williams for Charlotte. And Keon Lewis is going to try to break this free throw uh, miss streak, and he doesn't. Misses that one off the heel. TSA has only made one free throw in the last minute 51, so they're giving Charlotte a little bit of light, but they're still, they still need four possessions in 27 seconds. Here's the next one for Keon Lewis. That one's good. 82-71, 27 seconds to play. Here comes Ingram across the timeline. Flips it off to Cherry. Launches a three left side. Swish. And now Charlotte will call timeout as it's gone down to an eight-point game. 82-74 with 21.9, so it's getting a lot more exciting than anybody in this building would like for it to be. It just reminds me of that game at Oklahoma State. Yes. Well, only there was still time. That, that was an 11-point game with a minute 59, and they, they started uh, getting the benefit of questionable calls. They got the benefit of a guy that never played a good game before or since in Cesar Guerrero hitting all kinds of threes. But it comes down to you just got to make some free throws, and this game's over. That name, Caesar, just always always gives me nightmares. That's one I choose to forget. Yeah. 
Well, and, uh, and there was so much on the line in that game back to the preseason NIT and the 2011-12 season because the win would have sent you to New York to play in Madison, Madison Square, Square Garden. Garden. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, there's always next time. No, no, there'll be another time. Here's uh, Tyler Wood to inbound it. And they'll run to the ball and throw it up the floor to Agassi, and Devon gets uh, fouled from behind. There's the play you talked about, right? I know. I've said it. For, I've said it for two <laughs> games straight, and they finally run it perfectly. So Agassi to the free throw line. Still, it's a three-possession game with 20.5 seconds, and Devon can make it four if he hits both of these two free throws. When he hits both of these two free throws. And here he is with the uh, first of the two. And it gets really quiet in here, and the free throw is good. Well, he used all the rim <laughs> there, didn't he? Oh, you're talking now, huh? You haven't talked since uh, UTSA lost well, the lead. You know, as, as, you know, as superstitious as I am, when they started missing those foul throws, I figured I better turn my mic back on. <laughs> Here's the next one for Agassi. That one's no good. All right, turn it back off. 83-74, <laughs> 17 seconds to go. Hand it to Cherry. He can't shoot the three. His pass is intercepted by McGregor. Rico's going to hand it to Keon Lewis, and that's going to do it. Up the floor to Williams. Williams will lay it in with six seconds to play. Makes it 85-74. Ingram will come into the front court. And guess what, folks? Back-to-back -back winners for UTSA. The three is good with .6. But first of all, McGregor's got to inbound it to uh, Agassi, and he does, and that's the ball game. And UTSA has won two in a row, and they beat the, the Charlotte 49ers by a score of 85 to 77. So the final output becomes eight as Charlotte made a bunch of baskets down the stretch and UTSA missed some free throws. And however you add it up, it's a UTSA winner. It's a winner, Randy. It's a winner for the Roadrunners. Who would have thought? UTSA 2-0 in conference play, first in the, first in the conference. You've got to get excited with that. And they uh, hit on the road to UAB in Middle Tennessee with a ton of confidence and two big wins under their belt. 85-77 the final. Back with more in a moment from Elegant Sports. This is the Roadrunner Sports Network.